Yeah, Survivor know-it-alls. And let me just start off by saying, after 13 years, this is why I freaking love Survivor. That's right. Rob Sesternino here with the one and only Stephen Fishback. Stephen, how are you this evening? Uh, you know, bottled, bef bottled, befuddled, excited, confused, aroused, just filled with emotion, filled with positive emo and some negative emotions, Rob. Steven has even loosened up his tie tonight. Here we are. We are the, we are the two amigos alongside yeah. uh, Jessica Frey. And I'm going to uh, hide, uh, that hide Jessica Frey. She's going to join us later on in the show. But everybody else, we are here live and ready to go on a continuing coverage of what could possibly be the end of Stealth R Us, Steven, dare I say it. Well, you know, Rob, I, I think it will not be the end of Stealth R Us. I actually think that they had a chance to make it the end of Stealth R Us, and I think that as incredible a move as this was, they missed that, that crucial last thing. All right, well, we'll get into it. We've got, I've got about uh, 10 different branches of this thing that we're going to be talking about here tonight. Steven, tonight's episode of Survivor was so good, I spit out my retainer. <laughs> That's how good I it was. Will, I will go looking... If you, Rob, if you were on the beach screaming, screaming for help, like Chewbacca, I would come to you. I would not just sit there and be like, "What? What is he screaming? Is he screaming?" Yeah. You know that nobody, nobody got up except for Brenda. Everyone just sat there. So it sounds like Don is screaming for help. Boy, okay. So we got a lot to get to uh, here tonight. We are live here on RobHasAWebsite.com. Uh, you can send us your tweets at hashtag RHAP. We are also, uh, if you're watching us live on YouTube, we've got your comments coming in. So everything is happening. This is going to be a really fun show tonight. We're going to talk about that wild tribal council. And if you saw it tonight, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't see it tonight, uh, what are you, a sadist? Stop this. Go watch yeah, the episode. Yeah, get out, get out of here. Come back Come back after you've seen the show because yeah. we've got a, a lot to get to. We cannot bury the lead here. Philip voted out tonight, and Stephen, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I thought for sure we were seeing a, a, a replay of Survivor Redemption Isle. I thought for sure Philip was going to the final three this season. I mean, it sure looked like it. You know, no, he was in the in the majority position, the top position of the top alliance. You know, everyone wanted him there at the end with them. You know, th they had the numbers to split the vote, and then you know, Andrea says nothing can go wrong tonight, and Cochran says nothing can go wrong tonight, and Philip says nothing can go wrong tonight, and that's when you knew something was going to go very, very wrong tonight. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought maybe after all that, then I thought then the favorites were going to turn on Sherry and then Sherry was going to go home. But I am absolutely stunned here tonight on a Survivor Know-It-Alls to see Philip go home. I can, I still, I can't get over it. I thought there was going to be some sort of a recount or, or something. I, I really, I cannot believe Philip has, go, has gone home. And of course, we will bring you the exit interview that you've all been waiting for tomorrow morning when we speak with Philip on Rob Has a Podcast. But uh, let's, let's pick it up with these three amigos, this yeah. wild scenario that we saw play out here tonight. Of course, you, you, know, you started to feel like it was coming a mile away when once Reynolds wins immunity, once Malcolm goes looking for the idol, once the three amigos are all nominated for the Sprint Player of the Week, <laughs> Boy, you, you kind of had a feeling this is where it was going. But when Eddie, when Eddie gets the nomination, something magical is going to happen. Yes, yes. And, and the three amigos, you like the three amigos better or the numbskulls? What are we going with? I like the three amigos, man. Amigos, amigos everywhere. You know, so many great references. Uh, my blog from tomorrow will be filled with uh, quotes from the classic movie. So uh, look, look for that. Does that make Philip El Guapo? Yeah, that's right. Philip is El Guapo. And the town of uh, San, uh, whatever it was, San you know, Loco or whatever it was, is, uh, you know, Stealth R Us. All right, well, we'll have to go and check that out on Netflix before we read the, read the blog tomorrow. Yeah, you're okay. not going to get the blog. You might as well, you got to read it on, you know, see, see the movie before you get All right, it. let's get right into it. And boy, Stephen, my, my stomach was in knots tonight as we got to the end because I thought that after all that, after all that posturing, when Malcolm didn't stand up, I said, oh, no. Oh, no. He, he didn't. They're not going to play the idol. They're, yeah. they're bluffing. And, and finally, Malcolm, Malcolm, a true showman, he gets up, presents the idol to Jeff. Now, for the favorites, this is where I want to start off here tonight. 
they decide the seven players that are in Stealth R Us, uh, the, the six favorites plus Sherry, they decide their move is to call the bluff of Malcolm and, uh, and Eddie there tonight. Uh, with Eric voting for Philip, the they go three votes Malcolm, three votes Eddie. They call Philip calls the bluff. He tells everybody stay the course and ultimately pays with his life in the game. Stephen, of course, we know it did not work out for Philip here tonight. But was that the correct strategic move for these guys? Well, I mean, you know, here's where I think the error. Well, you know, it does seem like uh, they've got to right. If they don't, t at least they have. First of all, it's really hard to communicate at uh, tribal council, right? Because it's when you speak, you're, everyone can hear you, you know, and the, you see the favorites whispering back and forth with each other, and that's as subtle as it gets, right? Like you're speaking in front of a group of nine people. I think they have to say, we are going to call their bluff. Otherwise, next week, those guys have each have an idol again. You know, you get the same scenario again next week. Um, and if there were a way for them to say, let's all vote Sherry, then they would all vote Sherry. Guys would still have the idols. You know, they they, they would have no incentive to play them. But I mean, if if you have to th think this through, though, that for somebody in the group, for the whole of Stealth R Us, yes, for the for the good of the group, uh, ironically, the group that Philip started, this was the right decision. But for the one and the needs of the many outweighed the needs of the one yeah. here tonight. Uh, to uh, give you a, go back to uh, Star Trek II, uh, but for Philip, was the right call for him to say, all right, scratch this plan, new plan, we're voting out Sherry. I'm sorry, Sherry, it's time for you to go. That would have been smart thinking on Philip's part. You're absolutely right. That would have been a move that could have, uh, you know, could have saved the alliance. I mean, the thing is there, then they have, what, they have five votes for Sherry, assuming everyone votes for Sherry, mm -hmm. uh, and, and four votes for Philip, um, then the guys don't play the idols, you know, like, then Philip is screwed next week, too, if one of them wins immunity, you know, I think that, uh, I think it's a, you know, whether or not Philip could have maybe saved himself, you know, Eric might have still flipped, you know, so, um, Sherry obviously will vote Philip with the guys, Eric flips, Philip's going home anyway, and the guys don't have their idols. So are you saying that this was just a real Kobayashi Maru, a, a no-win, a no-win situation for Stealth R Us tonight? Well, I mean, I think when, you, when the three people you want to vote out are all immune, it is a no-win situation. And that's why I want to talk about where the three amigos went wrong. Because, Rob, it looked like an amazing move for the three amigos. You know, they all, they, they are posturing with their idols. They look handsome and beautiful and immune. And they take out Philip, who's been the villain of the season, and the uh, alpha dog for uh, Stealth R Us. But couldn't they have done more with this? You know, like, first of all, why not reveal the immunity back at camp to a few people and go up to Eric or you go up to Brenda and you say the three of us are immune you know one of you should come with us and uh, let's flip the game and if you don't we're gonna vote you out you know use the leverage they have in that moment to actually shift the dynamics of the game instead of just lasting one more vote because what happens next week for Stealth or us or for the three amigos you know they're out of luck but, Stephen, don't you think some of the brilliance of this was the sneak attack because there was no chance for the Stealth R Us Alliance? We've talked about this every week on the show. The pro everybody's downfall has been telling too many people the plan. Couldn't you easily have seen, you know, Malcolm brings in Eric or, they, or brings in, God forbid, tells Dawn what they're doing, and then they go back and tell Philip, and then they come up with the plan. Okay, if those guys end up, they all do this, then we're all going to do this, uh, and we'll... I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, stealth, you know, but the three amigos are all immune. There's no counterattack because they've got immunity. So they can just say, you know, get one, get Andrea. I mean, go to Andrea, who's already flirting with them, you know, who every time her name is, is mentioned, she has a nervous breakdown. You know, go to Andrea and say, if you don't come with us, it's you. We're immune. We're going to openly target you. That's three votes on you. She's going to freak out. She might really think about making a move that's a significant change in the game rather than just this one-off. They take out Philip and they're back where they were. I don't know. I think Malcolm's been burned two weeks in a row between the Corinne vote and then last week when he went and he tried to talk to Dawn and he, tr and he tried to talk to uh, Sherry as well. They both sold him out. And now they have a chance to counter 
at tribal council, say for instance now, those guys, they still have to play their idols. But those guys, for all their posturing, they're going to play their idols no matter what. And now Stealth or Us has a chance to vote out Sherry, again, almost like last week, identically, that they're, they're going to do the safe vote. They'll take out one of the fans that they don't even really care about. Now Malcolm wasted his idol, and uh, Eddie wasted the idol. So they wasted two idols. Uh, they wasted when Reynolds had immunity. This, this could be a game changer. Now what about this? What about this? Uh, first of all, I don't think it's going to be a game changer because all they've done is take out this joke who, you know, not a, I mean, you know, Phillips played a, a good game or a decent game this, this season, not as bad a game as, you know, we see, we've seen him play before. Um, but they haven't, like, they haven't assaulted the core power structure of Stealth R Us, which is, you know, uh, you've got Andrea, who everyone says is the ringleader, you know, and Cochran and Dawn are sort of the, the key decision makers. And, uh, you know, they've got that still intact. All they've taken out is the guy that nobody really cares about anyway. I mean, that's like, the, he's like Sherry. I don't know, Stephen. I think this has a ripple effect here. I mean, Dawn was freaking out when she was in a rock-solid position in the game here. Now what is Dawn's reaction when she gets back to Tribal Council? You think Dawn's not flipping out now? I mean, Dawn is scrambling. Eric is, is you know, flapping in the breeze. Sherry, who knows where she is? Brenda, Philip was the glue of Stealth R Us. Philip was the one who was really beating that drum of it's us versus them. Okay, seven of us, we're going, we're having this meeting. Nobody is going to be holding that group together in the same way. And I think that Malcolm might be in the best position of anybody in the game, Stephen. Well, let me, let me counter with what they really should have done, Rob. And it's not actually uh, announced that the immunity back at camp. It's at Tribal Council. They shouldn't have said they were voting for Philip. Now, by saying they're voting for Philip, they're giving everyone else down the line an easy out. They can say they're voting for Philip too. They, they're safe because they know Philip is the guy who's being targeted. If they don't say who they're voting for, then Stealth R Us really has to, to turn on itself. There has to be an immediate you know, argument, an immediate shift in the dynamics. Um, and uh, the other thing is, in that situation, maybe the guys don't have to play their idols. If they had said, we're voting for one of you, you're going to have to figure out what to do, then Stealth R Us has to come to a group decision to which one they want gone. Let's say they vote for Sherry, the guys hold on to their idols, they're gold. Let's say they vote for Andrea, guys hold on to their idols, Stealth R Us has picked itself apart and they come out unscathed. I think you're getting too cute, Stephen. There's no scenario where they can't play, where they don't play the idols. You have, if they're that in that situation, I just said? The you one I have just to, mentioned. you have to, you get too cute. And if either of those guys walks away, it's a, it's a decision that you wake up every day the rest of your life and say, oh my God, why didn't I play the idol? Why, what was I thinking? I was you have playing for the end game and not for one vote. You gotta pl you gotta play the idol, and you take away the easy out of the favorites taking out Sherry there, because but if I they're left to their own they, devices, even if they play don't even if they still play the idol, I think not saying Philip is the target is a good way to uh, is a good way to go, um, and uh, you know it makes them them turn on themselves. And I, I don't know. You, I see what you're saying. Like maybe they go after Sherry. If that happens, then they can course correct and say, you know what, we're voting for Philip. May, they might have won Eric back tonight. Eric votes for Philip. Eric is walking away from Tribal Council feeling victorious. He hated Philip. He didn't like how he jumped in the pool when he was all dirty. He didn't like in the beginning of the game. Maybe Eric is back in the Bro Lions now. The Bro Lions is back, baby. I disagree. I think Eric is now going to be more solidly Stealth R Us. He was Stealth R Us even with Philip in it, and he hated Philip. He hated Philip from episode one when he thought Philip was a bully. Every step of the way, he hated Philip, but he still voted with them. With Philip gone, he's going to vote with them even more aggressively. I don't know. This is going to be very, very, very interesting. Three level one episodes of Survivor in a row. Steven, you, you criticized this season early on. Uh, are, are you on board? This is a great season. I mean, I think it's a good, you know, I still think it was overhyped. I think we've seen, like, seven bad episodes and three good ones. Uh, you know, great move last night, very, ex or tonight, very exciting. Um, but I still think that it was not the move that's going to shift up the game. It's just a move that's going to make one big tribal council, and I think that's a, a missed opportunity for that reason. All right, let's pivot here. Where does the Bro Lions go from here? Okay, they've got three votes here. We have nine people left in the game. The six that they're up against, the what's the what's remains of Stealth R Us is Cochrane, Dawn, Andrea, Brenda, Eric, and Sherry. 
there's no nothing is holding that nucleus together except Cochrane, uh, Dawn, uh, Andrea, uh, Brenda. And and that Dawn, Dawn is the nucleus of the alliance. Yeah, I think Dawn, Dawn was going to quit the game. She was going to quit when she couldn't find her retainer, Stephen. Yeah, but just because she's an erratic nucleus doesn't mean you know, the thing about Dawn is everyone. I mean, Brenda just said, "I will never turn on Dawn." You know, Cochrane is tight with Dawn. Andrew's tight with Cochrane and Dawn. You know, I, I think that alliance is stronger than ever now without Philip in it. I don't know, Stephen. I think that the history of Survivor, when the when the head of the snake is cut off, the pieces scramble. I'm going back to in Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Boston Rob gets voted out. We'll compare this to the Tyson Tribal Council. I don't want to do that just yet. Boston Rob gets voted out. All of a sudden, Coach and Jerry are like, I don't know what to do now. I guess I'll no, go with you, Russell. It was Tyson who was voted out. Tyson was the glue in that. Uh, uh, well, yeah, and then, but then after that, Boston then they then Boston Rob goes next. Tyson, uh, Coach and Jerry end up flipping after a big move like this in Survivor Samoa. All of a sudden, uh, once that big Galu alliance starts starts, they lose a couple people. Now everybody is scrambling. People are jumping. You know. John Fincher is jumping on board with Russell, uh, with Shambo. So I think that the history of the big move, when you drop a bomb on somebody, I think that the peeps, people are going scrambling, and I think that the Bro Lions could be in a very good spot. I think those are substantively different to things that happened. You know, I mean, you talk about the Tyson move and Heroes vs. Villains. Tyson was the glue. He was why Coach was with them. He was why Jerry, you know, Jerry came with Coach and Coach came with Tyson. Nobody comes with Philip. Philip isn't linking anyone together. Philip is antagonizing everybody. And so getting rid of this, like, thorn in everyone's side is a good thing. You know, like, now finally we can have a great alliance and we're all friends. We'll or, see. or the Samoa thing. I mean, you know, that was an alliance that turned on itself. And that was exactly my point. If you get the alliance to turn on itself and start to betray its own members, that's when you introduce distrust into the alliance. And that's what could have happened had they not t targeted Philip out of the gate. I just think you're talking about this group like, oh, they were just so tight. And if they, you know, are without Philip and they'll miss a beat. Dawn wanted to vote out Andrea tonight. This is not a cohesive six. Um... I mean, I, I still disagree with you. You know, I think you see one thing where Dawn's like freaking out that Andrew's going to turn on her. Uh, I, I still think it's going to be a uh, you know a tighter a tighter five. Um, and these guys, they've proven they're tight with each other. They've proven they're big challenge threats. Like no one wants them in the game. You know, if anything, they've isolated themselves further by this huge move. They haven't brought a, they haven't brought anyone into their fold. You know, like you can say they've like maybe throwing the other people into disarray, but they haven't done anything proactive to say, you be with us, you come on our team. Okay, well, we'll see what, what happens next. Can I just ask, why in the world did Dawn think that Andrea was with the Bro Lions? Didn't the three guys from the Bro Lions try to vote Andrea out last week? Didn't they cast, <laughs> didn't they cast vo three votes for Andrea last Tribal Council? It is interesting how, like, but like, it seems like, you know, Andrea is flirting with the guys, and like, that's contrary to the BR rules, Rob. You know, it, we live in a post BR uh, era, and if you talk to the other alliance, you you're a suspect. All right, let's talk about uh, with Philip out of the game, Stephen. Uh, Stealth R Us could may or may not be dead at this hour. I think it's some. Can we talk a little bit about the Philip era? Can we talk about the the uh, what what is Philip's place in all this? We come to bury Philip, not to praise him, Rob. Okay, the F the Philip era of Survivor. We so we have the first time ever Philip is voted out of the game. Uh, he has a season where he goes to the end with Boston Rob. Right. He has a season here where he's set up better here. He right. also does not compete in an immunity challenge in the episode. That's such Survivor karma. It really is. Yeah, that like, is Survivor karma. I know, Phil. Like I, I know that there was no chance that Philip was going to win that immunity challenge. I, I don't even fault Philip for not competing in the immunity challenge, but it's such survivor karma yeah. that, the, of course, he gets voted out on an episode where he refuses to participate in the challenge. We know that God is a very active, you know, viewer of Survivor and has strong opinions. And if you, you know, slight God and and his viewing pleasure, he's going to slight you. Was it God or Mark Burnett? Or or <laughs> there's no difference after Mark Burnett has yeah. done the Bible. Hey, yeah. what's up? we have our third amigo. Our third amigo is here. Oh, Rob. Well, yes, uh, let's bring in a third amigo. Here we go. Brian Corden. What's up? From okay. Survivor Guatemala. Oh. Okay. 
Hello. Yes, a, a quite a, a historic night on Survivor and on Rob has a podcast tonight as uh, Brian Corden, who watched the episode at Stephen Fishback's house, becomes the first ever person from Survivor Guatemala oh. to appear on Rob has a podcast. <laughs> I feel like I was the odds-on favor for that. The rest of my cast has disappeared into oblivion. So Apparently no one from Survivor Guatemala is the only season, Brian was telling us, mm -hmm. that nobody has returned from. No, well, well, yes, yes, nobody from... Hey, uh, Stephanie, of course, comes back on Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. All right, so here's Brian Corden from Survivor Guatemala. Watch the episode with Steven. Brian, uh, Steven and I are a little bit conflicted. I thought this was a, uh, a master stroke tonight. Steven okay. thought it was not as great. Can you break the tie here on a night when, when uh, three is the magic number? I, I don't think it was super great. Whose was that? Steven, oh. yes. <sighs> Yeah. There wasn't much they could do otherwise, though. I, but I just, uh, it, it was all grandstanding on Malcolm's part, and I feel like he had a really great showing. It was that, like, big survivor moment that everyone's going to talk about with Malcolm. It's right. like, congratulations, you made it one day more. You're still on the edge. Was there no leverage you could pull? Was there no, listen, I have this idol. I'm going to play it. Andrea and Sherry come with me. And I, I don't know. I was, um... Yeah, I think it was just a big, big, uh, much ado about nothing, really. I'm with, I'm with wow. you, Brian. That's exactly what I would say. You guys are saying. tough critics. I mean, yeah. what do you think? That's in New York. Yeah. We, we had such epic moves on our seasons that we can easily <laughs> critique. Uh, <laughs> obviously. Look, I mean, I kind of feel like you buy yourself three more days in the game with, I mean, with your alliance intact, and then you go from there, and you took out the one guy who was really putting up the velvet rope between you and working with the rest of the players. I think that Malcolm has... It could be like a kid in the candy store here with trying to pick up some other pieces to vote with these guys. I mean, I guess getting off Philip loosens Andrea up a bit because that was the big tie with her. Right and, um, and certainly Sherry's a free agent. Uh, I guess Eric was showing a willingness to vote for Philip anyway. But yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here. Was this a huge game changer that has shifted the power? No. Does it have the potential to? Possibly. But I think there were ways to maybe play that a little bit smarter with that hidden idol. I agree. I thought it was it was epic. It was epic pro, you know, epic television, and it was exciting to watch. Um, but it was not, uh, you know, not a game changer. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. I think I know where you guys are going to side on this. Uh, certainly, would you would you guys agree this is Malcolm's finest hour on Survivor? Correct. No, I don't think so. I think it's his biggest, most it's his showiest hour. But I don't think it's his best hour. I felt like some of those tribal councils in Survivor Philippines, he, he, he played them better. You know, I thought he finessed some moves there. He really had some more interpersonal uh, dynamics uh, down there. And, uh, you know, like that one time in, in Philippines when he brought out the idol and didn't play it. You know, I mean, what mm -hmm. that was uh, probably a better move. Yeah. yeah. Steven, could you take down your lower third that it's you're I feel like Brian is being censored with uh we have a thing a thing blocking out his mouth Are you while he's to talking. Lose me Twitter followers, Rob. <laughs> no, or or tilt the screen down a little bit so we can yeah, see. How about that? How about that? Yeah, instead of <laughs> blocking blocking out his face. Oh look at that. You got some uh, chest. Uh, a little bit chest. A yeah. Little yeah. Whoa, whoa. Guys, take it easy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, I I don't know. I feel like not only was this Malcolm's finest hour, um I'm ready to put Malcolm Top 10 Survivor player of all time. How about that? Oh, what does that even mean? How do you, what does that mean, Rob? I'm, I'm ready to move Malcolm into the top 10. Give me, I think let's... results, you know, and this, this is a situation where, like, only results can, can uh, you know, bear that out, right? If this, if this move does, you know, there's obviously a lot more happening on the beach than we're aware of. You know, many more conversations. And each of those players has a more subtle uh, understanding of the tribe dynamics than we do now. Um, so I think this is a question where results will bear that out. And I think we have to wait till the season is Here's over. why, and I'm not even going to get into results. Here's yeah, who why. Who cares about results? Huh. <laughs> Here, here's why. No idols in the Keep like, mind, Rob didn't like, win either, so he's... Yes, yeah. that's why this is Survivor know Uh Here's why. Malcolm, top 10 Survivor player of, of all time. I'm, at this hour, maybe I'll, maybe I'll change my mind here in a couple of You're weeks, so but excited. I feel like... I'm so excited. But here's why. Uh, Malcolm, I've said all along, you know, for years, I've been talking about the Venn diagram. He's a physical threat. He's a social player, and he knows the strategic game, and the guy has guts, and, he ha and the guy is finding idols left and right. And you, can't, you, you don't teach that, finding the idols well, left and right. Uh, look, look, hey, say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Oh, uh, you know, Russell, whatever. Um, that Malcolm seems is the one that's ending up with the idol every time. So factor that all into the equation. I would rather a season of 20 Malcolms than a season of 20 Phillips any day. Malcolm, sure. he is the Venn diagram. He is the center, the social, the mental, the physical. Absolutely. I mean, yes. and he the guy is, what, 20, 
twenty five years old. Twenty, yeah, well, no, for sure. And oh, you know, the, young. Wow. He, here's one big weakness I think of Malcolm's, and it's we have never seen him lead an alliance successfully. We've never seen him lead a majority alliance. You know, in, in Survivor Philippines, he was always there on the sidelines. You know, he was like. He was kind of undermining Russell Swan on uh, on uh, whatever that was. Uh, uh, whatever, uh, not Singh. Not Singh, and he, he did have Angie though. I mean, that's impressive. He had Angie. He had his cuddle buddy. Um, and then you know they merge. He undermines Tandang. He's always the guy on the outside. He's never the guy leading the group, the big group, towards the end together. And I think that's one of the one of the skills you need to be one of the greatest. Though to his credit, for someone who's always on the outside, he's always someone people are trying to bring in. I mean, um, Pete last season couldn't couldn't keeping his pants long enough to wait for Malcolm <laughs> yeah. to come to his team. So that is actually, uh, I don't know about top 10 ever, but he's absolutely a really interesting player. All right, at this hour, okay, this is going to be a little polarizing question. Nine, at 9.43 Eastern, give me your pick, Malcolm or Russell Hans? Uh I'm going to actually say Russell Hans. I'm going to get a lot of flack for that, but my, my rationale is that I think the psychological jujitsu that Russell worked in uh, Samoa and Heroes vs. Villains, I think that's like unlike anything we've ever seen before. Uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to BC. I think that Russell is a more captivating player. I think Malcolm is a better player. So what's your question? Pick one. Um, shit, Russell? Shoot. Shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> shoot. Russell. Russell. I'm going with Russell. Oh, boy. This is, a, yeah. this is a tough one. Here's, he, here's going to be the telling thing, okay? If Malcolm comes back a third time. Now, Malcolm is, see, I, and I make the comparison because, right. look, Malcolm went, to, Malcolm went to four the first time. Russell mm -hmm. went to two the, the first time he played. They both come back. Nobody knows who they are the second time they play. So they both sort of have this free pass where nobody knows their background. We'll see how Malcolm does. Russell, of course, makes it to the end. They're both finding the idols left and right. But I think if Malcolm comes back a third time, I don't think his whole tribe says, hey, let's get rid of him. But, but Russell was much more in control of heroes versus villains than Malcolm is in, in control of this season. I mean, like... Okay, that's, that's fair. At this point in the game, yes, Russ, Russell uh, was, was more in control than Malcolm was, but we'll see. I mean, this, this is almost like the point where Poverty plays the two idols and JT is gone, and now... Well, let's see how this all plays out. But I think but this, this could be a very... Rob, because that, that's a move that really shifted the dynamics of the whole uh, game, heroes versus villains, where Poverty played those two idols... Villains got a majority. It picked off the heroes one by one after that. I don't see the same thing happening this time around. We'll see. We'll see exactly how this plays out. This is going to be a lot of fun to follow uh, the next couple of weeks. Uh, this episode was also billed as the greatest tribal council of all time. Uh, do we agree with that? Is this the greatest tribal council of all time? And if not, what is? First of all, the one you just referenced was better with Parvati on um, the two idols getting. It was a JT who went home that See, night. See, I was gonna say, I was gonna say the the one from Heroes versus Villains where Tyson got voted out. I would list that too. Heroes versus Villains was a very good season. I would say the season um, in Micronesia where um, Ozzy went home with the idol. I would say Vanuatu where Leanne went home. No, no, I don't know. No. I don't no. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what I say, fans were his favorites, right? That's what. Yeah. yeah when Oz went on, that was good. This was not that. It was fun. Yeah. Who an idol? Two idols, but uh, poverty did it better. Here's what, here's what the great part of this was. I, I felt like not only were the two idols played, but Malcolm saying, "Hey, I'm voting for Philip." And the the great part was not the idols, both the idols being played. The great part was, "Hey, here's what I'm doing." And then the favorites are forced to pass notes and whisper and talk about what are we doing in front of everybody. I think that was the part that which was so historic, which was so, you know, it, it does not happen every day. And I'm sure you can count on one hand the number of times that it actually had to happen at a tribal council. Cook Islands with, with uh, Rebecca, right, going home after Jenny or vice versa. Yeah, no, that was fun. Admittedly, that was fun. Watching, uh, watching everyone scramble, the ground, who, 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 what are we doing, Andrea, Philip, what are we doing? That was fun. Um, but nevertheless, you know, as I was saying earlier, I think, the, I mean, I, I agree, it's fun viewing. It's certainly gratifying viewing for viewers who have, like, been hating Philip for, you know, 10 episodes now. But is it, like, isn't it better to not say Philip, you know, keep, in, keep, close, keep the information uh, closer to the vest and uh, maybe do some real damage? Uh, 
One more question about this before we t- start taking your questions. Will this season be better or worse now that Philip is gone? Now, all you Philip haters out there, everybody who blamed all of the ills of Survivor Caramoan on Philip, will the season be better or worse without Philip going forward? Uh, better. Better. There's more fluidity now that Philip's gone because at least now you do have the question of what Sherry and Andrew will do, whereas that wasn't a question an hour ago. Steven? Well, I mean, you, to your, uh, you know, you argued that it would be right that, that now there's more play. As you argued similarly to what Brian was saying, that the, right, the, the people are more up in the air now. Um, I think it'll be better just from a screen time perspective. I feel like now we can see, you know, every single freaking episode we've had, like, two handing out of nicknames moments. Like, mm-hmm. we're done with those. Mm-hmm. Now we can actually see, uh, you know, other people talk. I don't know. I'm a little on the fence here. I mean, I feel like that Philip was a big character. He always stirred the pot. Things were, you may get, have gotten sick of Philip, but things were rarely boring when he was around. There was always some drama going on, even if it was not exactly about the strategy of the game. Will Eric, will more, will more Eric, will more Brenda, will more Sherry necessarily be better television only? Time will tell. Are you getting paid to be like a Philip booster? You know, you have been more positive about Philip than anybody else, like I, I in the world. I, I've said world. it before. I think the hate went has gone too far on Philip. I, I don't think that he is that he is the uh, the worst player. And people talk about him like he's been absolute, like he's terrible television, and he's a, and he's a, a horrible strategist. And I think that a lot of what he does again, I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm a Philip apologist, which apparently I'm, I'm being painted in the, in the corner. But everybody is so anti Philip. I just don't think that uh, if I Stephen, I wish that I could co- have Philip's game and I could come back to Survivor and people and everybody would be trying to figure out some way to keep me around instead of saying from day one, we got to get rid of this guy. Yeah, but that was Nayanka's game too, right? Is everyone wanted to take her to the end as well. You know, you, you, there's a lot of people. It was Natalie Tenerelli's game, you know. Uh, and there's plenty of people who, who succeed by doing nothing. Uh, and, you know, I, I agree. Philip was not as bad this time as he was. I thought he made some... Some good strategic moves. Yeah, actually, yeah. he, he wasn't and I don't, a bad player. He's just I, a person. You know, and I'm not putting, I'm not, I'm not talking about Philip as, as a top ten player. I just, I don't think he sucks like everybody else think he thinks he sucks. I think there's some merit to what he's doing, even though that's I, not my game. I agree. It's just how often do I need to hear us, uh, like you said, twice an episode, a new, a new, uh, your serenity and your true grit. Like I, hey, I get it, I get it, I get it. Don't fault that Philip gonna... for that. That's the edit. That's on the editor, and that's on the show. That's not on Philip. Ish, right? I mean, Philip has to know what he's doing and has to know what he's saying. Of course, but, if it's up to Philip, he wants sixty minutes of Philip screen time. Right. And you are arguing. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, it's not that I'm clamoring for more Eric or for more Brenda. I'd actually like to hear more from Andrea and from Cochran who I think have kind of always been the, the, the B-roll behind Philip and Shamar and Brandon. And I think, you know, fine, no more from Eric and Brenda. They're not giving us anything. But more from Cochran and more from Andrea? Yeah, actually, I am interested in that rather from Philip. Okay. All right, let's bring up some questions from you guys. You guys have been uh, – had a lot of questions here as we go along here. So let's start off with Natalie Kuchik, who says, you never see scrambling a tribal. That's what made it so amazing, and I agree. That's my that's my take on this as well. Uh, let's see. How about let's see? Rather than me was, go through these, let's let me bring in Jessica. Just, like nobody was even listening to Jeff, right? Like yeah. Jeff was talking, and people were just talking over each other. You know, Brent. Like I love that Brenda was insisting Andrea to Don, and Don obviously doesn't want to vote Andrea out. So Don's like. What? What do you mean? How would we do that? Her. Yeah, exactly. Her, but. Yeah, but it's like, no, Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. And I was like, oh, who knows? Okay. Uh, Big Mac 25 says, uh, SRU should have put four votes on Malcolm and three on Sherry. Losing the loyal Stealth Us leader in Philip will cause the alliance to crumble. So, choice of uh, comments, Rob. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, here we go. So uh, what do we think about this idea? Four votes on Malcolm, three votes on Sherry. Did I miss? Did you guys talk about why they didn't vote for Sherry? Well, Rob thought they, that if they had given them a chance to get organized, they would vote for Sherry. Yeah, I didn't understand why Sherry was not brought up at all. Why yeah, was no, like, well, then you, right. Sherry, sorry. This is 
you're the you're the hanger. Yeah. The pro the problem with something like that is that it has to be arranged beforehand. So they didn't have but the the sneak attack element to this it prevented something like that from being thought of because there just wasn't time. No, no that's that's process. compelling. That's compelling. But yeah. how is there no time when you're not like you know someone has to go. Shouldn't your eye go straight to the person who's at the bottom of the totem pole? And would that not then broadcast that maybe Sherry's not actually on the bottom? Well, Philip said stay the course. Philip said yeah. they're they're bluffing, and Philip was very concerned that they were gonna not, they were gonna bluff and not play their idol. So Did Eric Reichenbach say that first. Didn't he first say we have to split the votes? And then Eric Reichenbach is actually the guy who votes for Philip. Philip, and he's the one who told them. I think Eric Reichenbach was the first one to say we we need to, we need to still split the votes. Okay. All right, let me bring in Jessica. She's been monitoring the chat room this whole show, and she has a lot of your questions ready to go. Yeah, Eric Reckenbach should get the fishy. Anyway. Uh, may, maybe, maybe he should. All right, here we go. So uh, Jessica Frey has uh, been following your questions, and uh, here we go. Let's start it off with, uh, this is from the Ladybug Man. Uh, is Eric in the best position? If the Bro Lions is Pagong, he's in six at worst and has very few challenge competitors. Uh, what do we think of this, Stephen? Is Eric in the best position? I uh, yeah, I mean, I think Eric's in a great position. You know, we've seen if you've watched any of his deleted scenes, Eric's been really explicit that he has this no strategy strategy, uh, and uh, you know, his whole his whole goal has been to stay out of these conflicts uh, and wait for these guys basically to get screwed over. So I think that it's uh, it's going to work out for him. Yeah, Eric could be a bit of a kingmaker here because he could go with the Bro Alliance or he could stay with what's left with Stealth R Us. And if he has any pull with anybody, he could say, hey, I'll bring this person over. I'll go with you guys. Make me a deal. But is he better than fifth place on either side? What do you think? Well, if he wins the immunities with, uh, against Sherry Don Cochran, right. yes. Um, but I don't know if he can articulate a, a, a reason for the jury to vote for him, especially over someone like Cochran. Um, you know, guys, I, 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 I played, I played game twice, and I, I didn't, I didn't screw anybody over, and uh, I, 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 I just, I've just been really, really, I've been your friend the whole time, so I mean, vote for me if you want. I'll draw you a picture. Uh, sounds more like Elmo. <laughs> All right, Chad and Sarah, the uh, illustrious blogger at RobHasAWebsite.com says, did we get a glimpse of Brenda finally making her move tonight? Was, and was her move to scuba under the water to find Dawn's teeth? Um, well, you know, she did sort of have that, like, weird play for Andrea. And, uh, you know, it seemed, it seemed that she, even here, was sort of like, uh, you know, asking, expected more of this relationship with Dawn than Dawn was uh, giving back. Did Philip tell her to vote for Andrea? Did that, that. that happen? I no. Okay. That's gonna. That's a second viewing question that we're gonna yeah. have to. <laughs> that's not a question that can be answered on Survivor Know It Alls. Yeah. But, well, but boy, but no more then. Yeah. <laughs> well, the idea is that where we know everything except how to win the game, and uh, yeah. yeah. Do we think that there's a possibility of some sort of Freaky Friday scenario where some other survivor switched places with Brenda on this season and the real Brenda is actually playing Survivor in somebody else's body on a future season? Yeah. In Purple Kelly's from her own season? Oh, yeah. did, she, did she have a Freaky Friday with Purple Kelly? It could be. And Purple Kelly is now hosting podcasts, so it would make sense. <laughs> oh. She is. <laughs> All right, so Kurt with a K wants to know, what if the three amigos split their votes three ways and created a battle royal in the end? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Well, that's sort of similar to what I was saying in the terms of just like, even if they don't split their votes, at least to like suggest that they're going to split their votes to make it, to uh, really make a, you know, stealth or us pay. Uh, so you're, what you're saying is you're sort of like the Joker, where you're like uh, breaking a pool cue in half and giving it to two guys and saying, all right, whoever wins the battle is going to be uh, with me. So you're saying, hey, look, all three of us are safe. We're throwing our votes out willy-nilly. You guys, you guys decide what you're doing and then self-destruct Stealth R Us from within. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, like, let's say, let's say in that situation, right, Rob, let's say they're all like, we're going to target Sherry, okay? We're going for Sherry. We want Sherry out. The five of us, let's just vote for Sherry. If they can then say, you know what? We're all voting for Philip. We're voting for Philip. We've got Sherry's vote now. She's not with you guys anymore. Oh, okay. So maybe, <laughs> well, this is, well, this is quite a plan now. So yeah. now, so then they, you wait, then you wait for this all to play out, and then they say, that's it. We're all voting for Sherry. And then you say, psych, just kidding. We were all voting for Philip the whole time. Sherry, come with us. We're taking out Philip. 
Yeah, and then you just need one more person to flip, as you know, maybe Reichenbach would have, and then yeah, well, you got uh, you got an alliance. Yes. Well, again, now now we're building on the perfect plan here. Now yeah, well, this is like <laughs> obviously this is Wednesday night quarterbacking, and it's yes. uh, you know, an unfair, now, uh, unfair advantage for us. Yes. Yeah. If they if it was the six amigos and they had us in the writers' room, we could have right. given them some notes on their script. Yeah. And then help them out a little bit. Fully fed and well rested. Uh, you know, obviously the fact what they did given the conditions is uh, tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So uh, Z Pomeroy, wasn't it wise to take Philip out as he was an automatic final three go to every other member of Stealth R Us? Yeah, I think that's a good point because everybody had Philip built in in their final three for yeah. the for the good of the three. Jessica, is he gone? It's our podcast now, Brian. <laughs> Coming to you live. What an unfortunate screenshot. From my, from my apartment. Oh, no. You're back. No audio, though. Um, hey, Jessica, do we have audio? Okay. Um, Rob, you still don't have audio. Yeah, you guys are good. Just keep talking. Okay, so um, so no, I mean, it's easy. It's just, we'll just fill time. You know? Okay, okay. How about that? Can you hear me now? Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Welcome okay, back. Okay, good. All right, so back to back to what I was saying for the for the good of the three amigos. Doesn't that help their chances of getting in somebody's final three now that Philip is out of the picture? Yeah, someone's got to go in the final three now. But does it help the three amigos or does it help Brenda? I mean, that's a. I mean, and honestly, like that's the reason that it. Might Make Stealth or us closer together is that suddenly uh, there's a lot more room in that final three for those people. Yeah, you know, no one is the, the bottom of the alliance got a lot less clear. Okay, uh, here's from uh, Michael Norris. Uh, did it help Malcolm that Eddie didn't even try to save himself when he thought he was going home? He could have messed it up. Yeah. So if Eddie was scrambling, could that have screwed things up? Does it help that Eddie is kind of a non-entity? Um, well, at what point, I mean, it seems like pretty early on, right, they had this plan. Like, obviously, this wasn't something that just came together at Tribal Council. Those guys seem pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe this plan came up at the point where Malcolm found the second idol. Right. Yeah, pretty much. It had to. Speaking of Eddie's blunders, that tribal, that uh, immunity challenge, uh, that oh. was just heartbreaking. Yes. <laughs> Oh. A real, a real blunder there for Eddie. Also, yeah. not digging Eddie with the beard. I think Eddie uh, is, for whatever reason, some Survivor players pull off the beard. I feel like Eddie is just, uh, his, he's gotten like a, a, the beard is just getting too big. It's like the beard is eating his, the rest of his face. <laughs> he's, well, he's like in a Wolfman mask now. He's just got like the, the two eyes uh, behind the rest of the beard. Yeah, I, I was saying that he looked like he was, uh, his face had been. Uh, He's like in one of the. Ah, I can't even pull it together. Forget it. Move on. Move on. I, can, I got nothing here. I got nothing. Like he's like peeking out from behind a bush at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dawn's bread. Why didn't Philip just tell Brenda, Dawn, Andrea to vote for Eric or Cochrane? It would have forced a tie. So why didn't Philip tell Brenda, Dawn, or Andrea to vote for Eric or Cochrane? And it would have forced a tie. I mean, that's uh, exactly the kind of thing that would have been, uh, you know, destroyed that alliance. I guess that's probably what they were hoping for. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's take a let's take a couple more questions and sort of, sort of let's wrap this up. Then we'll let this digest, and then I'll come back tomorrow with another member of the New York Survivor Club, Sophie Clark. We're going to talk about everything uh, with Sophie, and I know she's not going to hold back any punches talking about this episode. No. All right. Gaming Keeper. Who in Stealth R Us gains the most from Philip getting voted off? Great question. So, who of Stealth R Us who has the most to gain tonight? So let's say, I think, you know, I think Andrea loses, right? We can agree yes. about that. Like, Andrea's number two was, was Philip. I think Andrea loses the most by Philip getting voted out. Would I'd you... say winners Brenda. and losers. All right, Brenda, Brenda is the winner. The winner. I'd say Brenda. She's the one who was a hanger on. She kind of made inroads with Dawn this episode. Now Philip's gone. Who's Dawn going to pull in next, Brenda or Eric? Uh, I'd, say, I'd say Brenda. Um. But, I got to see Brenda do something. I mean, it's one thing if Brenda has been playing possum this whole time. I don't think you can go 30 days on Survivor and play possum and then all of a sudden wake up and then, you know, start playing some amazing games. So I'll be very surprised if Brenda is, is able to do that. And for Andrea, do we know, is it necessarily a terrible thing for, uh, to have Philip gone? Because wouldn't you say, is she the number one now? 
Well, but the thing is, like, she was always the one who was calling the shots, but she had this figurehead yeah. who always would vote with her, who always back her up. A and shield. Would, and who would internalize the ideas as his own. Yeah. So she would say something, and he would become the biggest, uh, you know, advocate for it. I She's mean, lost the numbers. It, all right, not, can I make one, one more pop culture reference here tonight? Please. I mean, is this is this not like uh, when Tony Soprano had Uncle Junior, who was at the head of the family, and then Uncle Junior gets arrested now, and Uncle Junior they take him away, and now Tony is the really is the de facto head of the family for Andrea. Because no, Junior was always the, they had a very you know they weren't didn't have they weren't always simpatico. Didn't Junior try to kill Tony at one point? You at know? one point. Yeah. Huh. So like you know Philip ne Philip was always tied with Andrea, and there was never any any uh, you know. Animosity between them. I, I kind of think either Dawn or Cochran gains the most, actually, because they go from like having to share. You know, before it was uh, Philip and Andrea, and uh, Dawn and Cochran were the leaders. Uh, Andrea's lost, you know, her her anchor or her partner. Now those two are kind of the driving force. Yeah. Ken Cochran, Andrea, and Dawn pick up the pieces. That's going to be the big question moving forward here. I think. Yes, absolutely. It's basically there's three threesomes here. There's the there's the three amigos. There's what's left of the Stealth R Us core of Dawn and Cochran and Andrea, and then the three floaters. And right now, the three floaters, uh, they should they should bro down and get an alliance going of Sherry, Brenda, and Eric, and see uh, which side is going to give them the best deal. Rob, you know that never happens. Just because there are three people who exist in a tribe does not mean they are friends. Does not mean they have the will to work together. Uh, it's a common uh, you know. Can't believe, you know, just because just because they could do something doesn't mean they ever will. I'm also not convinced that anyone wants to team up with Reynolds and Malcolm and Eddie going right. forth into immunity challenges. That's it. Like, what do you want? To, why would you want to be the fourth and fifth of that alliance? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have nothing else going on, I think that's the. I mean, I think that Malcolm needs to. If he can get like. Well, the problem is Sherry hates Reynolds and Eddie. That's the big. That's the big problem for him. Eddie's not can, a big fan. Or uh, Eric's not a big fan of uh, Reynolds either. Right. Yeah. The thing is, Malcolm needs like a side alliance. That's what he needs. He needs like uh, basically like you know Brenda and Eric thinking like, oh, I'm really working with you guys, and you're really my. We're really the final three, and he needs to sort of like the Boston Rob plan of getting everybody under one umbrella and get a five moving forward. Well, so I have a question along those lines. Was it a good idea for Malcolm to give up the idol? What if Malcolm plays the idol, doesn't save Eddie at all, Eddie gets sent home, uh, but Malcolm is safe, and Malcolm can play the idol again, you know, another idol next week. And then he sees his alliance get picked off, then it's just him, he's much less threatening, um, and he, you know, then can do something with those side alliances. As it is now, Malcolm, you know, you were saying three days in the game is all you need. Malcolm has six days in his pocket. That's a good point. It's a good question. It's a good question, and one that we're gonna get to see play out. I mean, uh, and you know, and also for Malcolm, what he could do is he's gotten so good at high, finding the idols, he could just be, you know, give himself six days to find an idol each <laughs> yeah, time. Seriously, so, yeah. You know, and the question is, is he close enough to daylight where he can win immunities and supplement that with his idols? And maybe if I've got two immunities in my pocket. Plus, I can win immunity challenges where I don't have to spend the idol and then have another three days to find another idol. That's an interesting play. Um, but I think ultimately what this does is this buys Malcolm uh, more than three days, more than six days. It buys him another season. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I'll play it. All right. All right. Fair, fair enough. All right. So, uh, Survivor, Survivor Know It Alls, uh, this was a, a huge show tonight. I know we've got a, a lot of you guys have a lot to say tonight. If you guys comment on the YouTube video, I will comment back uh, later on tonight. I'm going to eat some dinner after this, and then I'm going to come back and, and uh, write back to some of your comments on the YouTube video of this. So uh, leave us some comments, and if you enjoyed the show tonight, please uh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us uh, with uh, getting found in the YouTube search engines, and we appreciate it. So. And as always, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to get more Survivor interviews. So, uh, Brian Corden and Stephen Fishback, what's next for you guys? Good. I don't know. I got Who knows? We'll see where the night takes us. Finding new ways to get Guatemala back in the uh, ring of Survivor. Yeah, there you go. That's you mean, my, this is my this number is, one. Yeah. Yeah, Brian Corden, tell us, what is the best thing about Survivor Guatemala? Why should people go out and, and buy that season on iTunes? The pre-jury was amazing. <laughs> You can stop after episode six, though. It just goes downhill real fast. 
That's why no one's come back. Yeah. And, and Jessica Frey, how how is everything uh, tonight in the uh, in the chat room? Anything to anything to report? Oh, hold on. Wait, let's get Jessica Frey unmuted. Yes. Everything was good. Everyone was really active, and we had um, over three hundred people watching. So definitely a big episode for Survivor. A big episode for Rob. Hey, hey Jessica, who who do people agree with more, uh, Brian and me or with Rob? I don't know. I think they just like the bickering. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> just... It's good. Bickering equals ratings. So. Oh, All right. Well, yeah. In in the off season, we'll uh we'll debate uh taste great and less yeah. filling. Oh man, <laughs> obviously tastes great. But I think <laughs> I think people want a movie cast from you guys. So on uh, the three amigos. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, so tomorrow morning I will be live with, or it'll be live for me, but it'll be recorded for you guys. But it's this all the same with the the CEO of Stealth R Us Inc., Philip Shepard. We'll have the exit interview that everybody's waiting to hear. We'll talk to Philip about what he could have done differently at that tribal council. Or if I know Philip, he'll say he there was nothing he could have done differently. He did he did everything perfect. So we'll see about that. Plus, I'll talk with Sophie G. Clark in our recap of, to, of the episode tomorrow night. So a lot going on here. Very big weekend uh, on Rob Has a Podcast. And uh, had a great time this weekend with Stephen Fishback in New York at us, uh, the Reality Game Masters. Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens uh, there, I guess, you know? Yeah, lots, lots of I had fun or not. Lots of fun with uh with, with Stephen. Uh, Stephen, you didn't tell us all. Who is getting the fishy? Have you uh, made a decision? Uh, you know, I, I had to give it to the three amigos uh, just so that I didn't piss off uh, my readers too much. <laughs> fishy, fishy. Wow. Fish, 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 fish. There you go. There's, All right. So check out. Nice. Is that Follow Stephen Fishback on Twitter and make sure you don't miss his blog tomorrow and see exactly uh, why he gives the fishy to the three amigos. So, you're, uh, uh, you're not on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. Can't follow Brian Corden. No. Stay off of Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, so that's going to do it for us here tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Rob has a podcast talking about a very crazy level one episode of Survivor. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.